<laughs> Great outfit. <laughs> hey. Yes. Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, everyone, welcome to the, the Tesla Design Studio, where we've held uh, uh, many uh, product unveilings before. I uh, hope you guys all have a really great time tonight. Uh, I, I think I've never seen so many cameras in my entire life. This is, <laughs> this is cameras everywhere. Um, so we, we're, gonna, we're gonna start off by just talking a bit about uh, how did we get here? You know, what, what are the things that have led to this day? Uh, what are the cars, like, how did Tesla start out? How did we, you know, where were we 10, 11 years ago uh, what, what has happened over that intervening time? Um, you know, because it occurred to me that a lot of people, they only heard about Tesla maybe a year or two ago, and, you know, electric cars are kind of like taken for granted, but there was a time when electric cars seemed very stupid. Um, and, and it wasn't that long ago. And the, the idea of creating a car company was stupid, of course, um, and then making an electric car company was like stupidity squared. <laughs> and um, so, so let's let's take a look at the first car we ever made, the, the Tesla Roadster. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. It, it's a bit small. Um, it's great. It's great. Um, so, so the crazy thing is, uh, if you if you go back 11 years today, Tesla had made one car. That car, that's serial number one of of, of Tesla. So, that's that's my car actually. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so, it, it, and on, on February 2008. Uh, we, we'd literally only made one car, that car. Um, and it didn't really work very well, I have to say. It broke down a lot. Um, and it took us another three months just to make the second car. And now uh, we've made about 550,000 cars. Yeah. So. And after the, the Roadster, uh, Essentially, what happened with the Roadster is we said, okay, we want to make a car, we want to really break the mold about how, you know, how do people think about electric cars. To think about electric cars as being slow and ugly and, and poor performance, so we want to have a sports car, you know, a car that is fast, looks good, uh, sexy, that's right. Ha ha, ha ha, you took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> exactly. Um, Sexier. Mm. <laughs> That's right. So, so, so the, the, the Roadster, we wanted, the reason we did a sports car is we wanted to create a car that uh, would break the mold for electric vehicles. Um, and that, that would be, yeah, sexy and, and fast and long range. And um, that's, that's why we did the Roadster. Um, and uh, you know, people, people say that, well, you, you won't be able to make the, you won't be able to make a car with those specifications. And if you do, nobody will buy it. So we had to prove those two things wrong. And then after we made the Roadster, they said, okay, sure, you can make some toy sports car, but you can't make a, 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 a sedan. You can't, there's no way you could compete with the, uh, the, 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 the luxury sedans of, that are gasoline, because they're the best. Um, and you, there's no way you could make an electric car that's like that. So we did. <laughs> Model S. Exactly. So noisy. Where are all the fumes? Where's the exhaust pipe? Where do you put the gasoline? Yeah. So we actually started designing that car um, in the rocket factory. So we didn't have a, a design studio. Um, 
So we took a little corner of the rocket factory and, and, and Franz joined. And we, we just, uh, with a tiny crew in a corner, corner of the rocket factory, we, we designed that car. Um, and uh, I think this, that, that car was really important because it was competing against the best of the gasoline cars. So if, if, competing against, if you can make an electric car that can, that can beat the best of the gasoline cars, that's just a, it's a very powerful statement um, to prove that, that you can go electric. So then, uh, working on the, from the Model S, uh, which by the way, um, in terms of how, where the name comes from, I actually, I like calling things what they are. So Roadster is called Roadster because it's a Roadster. There is, no, <laughs> there, there is no good word for sedan. <laughs> so we couldn't call it the sedan. It wouldn't work. Uh, or saloon. There's just like literally no word. So the, the, the Model S stands for sedan. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this, is, this is how out of touch I was. I actually didn't realize at the time that Model S also means models. <laughs> and, and, and then I had like a, at one point a license plate that said Model S2 because it was like the second production Model S and it was like and, I, and as I was walking away from my car I said wow what a jerk his license plate says Models 2 <laughs> yeah I'm like okay <laughs> better not have that license plate so um, but then going from the, from the Model S we said okay uh, we, we want to make the, the, be, the best SUV in the world um, we want to do something. We it kind of got carried away, actually, with the, with the Model X. Um, we, 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 we was like, let's let's have we, we, practically every every technology and whiz bang thing we could possibly think of. Um, and uh, the Model X is like, as a car, it's like a Fabergé egg meets a spaceship. It's like um, it was insanely difficult, um, but it, but it is it is an amazing vehicle. Let's bring it out. <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah. You can see a certain position forming, maybe. <laughs> so, the the Model X, um, like yeah, like I said, it really feels like a Babbage egg spaceship, um, and uh, it's 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 X for crossover SUV. Um, but then after we had the Model S and the Model X, I thought it'd be pretty funny if, if we had the Model E. Um, uh, and, yeah, and, and, and then, but then like Ford threatened to sue us. Uh, <laughs> Ford killed sex. <laughs> but I said, what if we call it the Model 3? Because that's completely different for me. They said, that's fine. <laughs> So with, with the, the Model 3, let's bring out Model 3. <laughs> That's right, exactly. <laughs> exactly, smart summon with a person. <laughs> so we, we made the original Roadster, the Model S, the Model X, the Model 3, and then we also uh, then made the new, new generation Roadster, which we'll bring in. Sweet. Hey, sure. Yeah! So uh, yeah, here we have the original Roadster, the new Roadster. Yeah. And then, hey, how's it going? <laughs> and then the, the semi. Uh, the, the, actually, the, the Tesla semi drove here nonstop all the way from the Bay Area. So that Tesla Semi, a 500 mile range electric uh, semi. I, I learned to actually 
uh, only after naming the thing that uh, semi ha has two, wor two meanings. Um, <laughs> it's <a> semi sexy. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, so we're really excited about uh, bringing those products to market. Um, and uh, so, so that's sort of talking about our products. But then the, the, the factories are as, much our, uh, are as much the product, if not more, uh, than, than the, uh, the, the vehicles themselves. In fact, I, I, I really think like, the, the difficulty and value of manufacturing is underappreciated. It's insanely difficult. It's, it's like relatively easy to make a prototype and extremely difficult to mass manufacture that prototype or to man mass manufacture a vehicle reliably and, and at scale. Um, I mean, even for rockets, I'd say it's probably a factor of 10 harder to design the manufacturing system for a rocket than to design the rocket. And for, for cars, I'd say it's, it's maybe 100 times uh, harder to design the manufacturing system than to design the vehicle itself. Um, so, uh, that, that's what the free market, we, we, I don't mean to have it in black and white. It's like, it's not so long ago. <laughs> they didn't even have color cameras back then. <laughs> it was 2010. Um, so it, but it, it was very bleak. It's like, essentially, the, the, you know, when we acquired the, the, the Fremont factory, which used to be called Numi, uh, people sort of th thought, oh, you've got a car factory. Now, if you have a car, they sort of think, if you have a car factory, you can just make any, any car. It's like, no, that's like saying you've got a box. Uh, <laughs> and that box can have anything you want in it. No, only if you make the thing in the box. Um, so, uh, although we, we did get the, the, uh, we, we had a, um, get a very good deal on the, the Numi factory, uh, Toyota and, and General Motors actually took all of the good equipment out. Um, and Anything that, that, had to, that was like so useless, it wasn't even worth the scrap was left. That, so it literally looked like that, but in color. Um, <laughs> um, and and it, it took an, an enormous amount of effort by a very talented team to actually turn essentially what looked like a derelict warehouse into a working, working car factory. Yeah. So. And, and in fact, like t today, the, the, the Fremont factory, which is an enormous building, I think it's like the second or third biggest building in the world by footprint, is so dense, uh, so densely packed with, with people and robots. By this picture has like robots, but there's 20,000 people that work in, in, the, uh, in, the, in at the Fremont factory um, across four or five shifts. So it's, it's really a massive amount of people um, and robots. So it's, it's like this giant cybernetic collective. Um, so that, that, was in, that was way harder than making the car, <laughs> by far. Um, and um, I mean, it's worth noting, like, the, the last time, at least in, in the US, the last time any car company achieved mass manufacturing was about 100 years ago. That is the last time, and then, and then Tesla. It's literally that crazy. So, like, the, the, like the issue is definitely not coming up with a car design. It is absolutely all about building the production system. Um, so you want to have a good product to build, but, but that's that's basically the easy part. Um, then, then the factory is the hard part. Then, then the, the the challenge is like, okay, if we if we create a car factory, where the heck are the batteries and and electric motors and power electronics are going to come from. Um, and, and that's where we, we, we need to say, OK, we better build something that's capable of 50 gigawatt hours, at least, of, of cell output, which at the, at the time when we proposed the Gigafactory, I, I believe like total global output for, of, 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 of lithium-ion batteries for all purposes, phones, laptops, silly, you know, cars, anything, was about 30 gigawatt hours. So we're like, okay, well, just do the basic math. We need something that's, we need 50 gigawatt hours. So um, we, we better have a real big factory, um, <laughs> or there's no way. So, um, and uh, <laughs> we, 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 we were gonna build it in, in California, but like, it would've taken two years just to get the permits. Um, so 
we built the Gigafactory in the amount of time it would it would have taken to get the permits in California. Um, that, that's what the Gigafactory looked like the, in 2010. It was basically rocks and bushes. <laughs> okay, and now this is what it looks like now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so and, and it's only about a third complete. So the, 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 this went complete, I think it, it, it's about four or five times the size of the Pentagon. Um, so it, it's kind of difficult to appreciate scale, but th that, that thing, although it, it, it's really quite tall, it's like 70 feet tall. Um, so uh, the, the volume of it is just mind, mind blowing. Um, it takes two hours just to walk around it. So, um, you know, again, it's, it, work of, of a tremendously talented team working like crazy, like tens of thousands of people to, to produce this, this, uh, this factory. Um, and today it, it, it produces um, more uh, lithium ion than the rest of the world combined. So, um, now, now, now we're also building a factory in, in China, which I'm really excited about. Um, as you can see, it's, it's it, th th this, <laughs> very impressive, <laughs> very impressive, um, a large puddle. Um, so th that, when, um, when I was there in January, uh, that's, that's what it looked like when we did the groundbreaking ceremony. And this is what it looks like now, three months later. But this is what it will look like at the end of the year. So th th things are things are moving fast, um, and the w w this this will actually be um, once it's complete the equivalent of our Fremont car factory plus our Nevada uh, battery gigafactory combined. Yeah, so it's in integrating the two, uh, which kind of makes sense. Um, so yeah, so we're really excited about this. Um, we're a great a great great team in China, and, and this is going to be really important for making. Um, affordable versions of the Model 3 uh, and Model Y uh, for the, for the uh, greater China market. And then, besides cars, we have some other things. <laughs> so, the solar roof and power wall. Uh, <laughs> yeah. um, so, uh, th th this, is, this is definitely gonna be the year of the solar roof uh, and power wall. Um, the, because of like uh, extreme challenges with the Model 3 production, uh, we have to basically allocate all resources to Model 3 production because uh, otherwise we're gonna die. Uh, and <laughs> and so, so basically, <laughs> it was pretty tight, I have to say. Um, that was a hard one. Uh, I would say like, like, like 2018 was probably, felt like a aging five years in one, honestly. It was really intense. Um, <laughs> so, uh, uh, thank, thank you for supporting Tesla through this difficult period. Thank you. Yeah. Um, but it, 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 now, that, now that Model 3 production is going pretty well, um, we're going to finally uh, allocate engineering attention to the solar roof as well as the solar retrofit. Um, I'm pretty excited about both the solar tile roof and the solar retrofit and uh, power wall. Um, like, part of the reason we could also couldn't make power walls, we, we, we uh, couldn't make enough cells. So we had to either allocate cells to the car or to the power wall. It was like, well, we've got to make the cars. So then power wall got cell star, basically. Um, but 2019, so we are now going to ramp it up. Um, and then power pack. So power pack is kind of like our industrial strength uh, uh, battery storage system. Um, and uh, we, we did the... Uh, the biggest battery storage system in the world in, in Australia. Um, and yeah, that was, that was uh, really super cool. Um, and then we d we're doing one that's uh, roughly uh, a gigawatt hour scale uh, in, ca in California. So just uh, in Southern California, right nearby, we're building a, a gigawatt hour scale uh, power pack. And so we expect this to ultimately be uh, really uh, uh, critical for transitioning the world to sustainable energy. Obviously you have to have sustainable energy production and sustainable energy consumption. So the st sustainable energy production needs the solar panels plus the battery, because the sun doesn't shine at night, and then uh, those electric cars. 
know, electric vehicles in general. Yeah. So, but I mean, the, the really exciting thing is if you have, with, with solar, bat, solar, solar plus battery plus electric vehicles, we have a fully sustainable future. This is a future you can feel really excited and optimistic about. I think it really matters. Yeah. And, and, and then char uh, supercharging. So, um, you know, the, the, the first, in 2010, we had zero superchargers. So there was no, you couldn't really dr drive long distances with an electric car uh, in, in 2010. Um, uh, so it was like, okay, we better have some high, some high power chargers, otherwise it's gonna be extremely inconvenient to drive long distances. Um, so uh, built into the, the, the Model S, um, which was a high voltage DC bypass directly to the pack. So you can just sort of mainline power right, in, right into the pack. Um, and then we stick it, we, we, then nobody was building high, high power chargers. So like, okay, we better build these high power chargers because nobody's building them. And um, so we went from zero uh, superchargers to building a, a global network of superchargers. Yeah. Yeah, so. It's pretty nutty. Each one of those, each one of those is, is a supercharging site. So um, supercharging team has done an incredible job uh, building uh, a, a global network of superchargers that allow you to travel uh, to a massive section of, 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 the, of the world, basically anywhere in North America, almost anywhere in Europe, uh, most places in China, not the Gobi Desert yet, but most places. Um, we'll, we'll cover the Gobi Desert. We'll get there. <laughs> And Saskatchewan, I, I swear to God, there is. <laughs> I've specifically asked about the Saskatchewan supercharger. <laughs> and I'm told it is, it is under construction. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> I've asked about it like twice. It's, I'm, t I'm told it's going to be completed soon, and then you'll actually be able to drive across Canada. Um, so, yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> Kazakhstan. <laughs> Actually, we, we have like a, a, some great supporters in Kazakhstan. I think we probably <laughs> we we should have. We will build superchargers in Kazakhstan. There you, you heard it right here. <laughs> uh, anyway, we're going to build a lot more superchargers, um, and and we have actually a, a version three of the supercharger that we just unveiled. And in fact, uh, yeah. So the, the superchargers actually started out um, only at about 75 kilowatts, and now they're at, uh, with version three, uh, 250 kilowatts, and we think probably can even go a little, little higher than that. Um, and so if you've got a long range model three, it's, uh, it's capable of charging at about 1,000 miles an hour or 1,600 uh, kilometers an hour. Yeah. So, and, and we, uh, uh, we have one uh, working in the Bay Area, and then the one here at the Design Studio is uh, also working as of tonight. So, yeah. So, so we're going to be rolling out the version three supercharger uh, throughout the world, just gradually upgrading uh, the existing sites as well as adding new sites. Um, so we, we did we did slow down our, the supercharger rollout a little bit because we wanted them to be version three instead of version two. Um, but now that we have version three running, and we'll um, we're going to spool our production, and so you're going to have like um, a, a radical improvement in supercharging uh, worldwide by sometime next year. Yeah. So. So in terms of where we are today, uh, we've got, uh, obviously, the S3 and the X. Uh, we've uh, made, I think, 550,000 vehicles, something like that. Um, the the uh, 12 months from now, we will have made about a million vehicles. So, so it's, it's pretty wild to think that 11 years ago today, we had made literally one car. Um, and a year from now, we will have made a million. Yeah. I mean, th this, is a, this is a testament to, to the incredible talent uh, and, and, and effort of the people at Tesla. I'll just say thank you to people at Tesla. You guys are incredible. Yeah. So, again, yeah, 4 million tons of CO2 saved. Um, 
In fact, with the, the four millionth ton, uh, it just ticked over like an, like an hour ago. So the four millionth ton just ticked over tonight. Yeah. So, uh, you know, just talking a bit about like, you know, what were the, what, what were the thoughts back, back then? What were some of the comments? Uh, let's see. Uh, the internet is forever. <laughs> Um, if this is a, a mere like taste, it was like, like I said, it, it was, electric cars were considered extremely impossible and stupid, uh, and, and, and in various forms. The you know, the, you're a fraud. Bah. Like okay, you can drive that fraud. <laughs> um, okay, uh, and then now things have changed. Yeah. The, the, the goal of Tesla was literally this, is like, to what degree, in fact, the, in, you know, when we created it, we're like, okay, the fundamental historic good of Tesla sh w should be measured by the degree to which we accelerate the advent of sustainable, uh, sustainable energy and transport. Um, and our goal all along has been to try to get the rest of the car industry to, uh, to go electric. We did a, a, a joint venture thing with, uh, with Toyota and with Mercedes. Um, we, we open sourced our patents uh, three or four years ago. Um, made, them, made them freely available, um, and uh, so it's it's ex extremely rewarding to see that the the rest of the industry is going electric. This is great, great. So, and, and and I was just wondering, like, if where will where will Tesla be in ten years? You know. <laughs> Mars. <laughs> exactly. Uh, we will be driving a Tesla on Mars. I, I, think, we could, I think we actually could. OK. Tesla will be on Mars in 10 years. I think it will. I think it will. So uh, uh, after that uh, extended history, history lesson, uh, <laughs> what, what, what about the actual, the actual reason you came? OK. There's a missing car. <laughs> it's, it starts with a Y, <laughs> ends with a Y, and that's Y in the middle. <laughs> Bring out the model Y. <laughs> All right. The model Y. So, uh, like the three, uh, it, it, it will be extremely safe. So that the you may know the, the Model Three uh, has the uh, the lowest probability of injury of any car ever tested by the uh, U.S. government. Um, the Model Y we expect will have a, a similar result, uh, five stars in every ca every every category, with the battery pack low low in the floor. It's going to have a very low center of gravity. So this will it it it, it has the, the functionality of a of an SUV, but will it will ride like a sports car. So this thing will be really tight in corners. Uh, and we expect it will be this, the, the safest uh, mid-size SUV in the world by far. And at Tesla, we actually uh, always design with safety as the number one goal. Um, it's, it's like, like people, people think, OK, performance, sure, but, but safety first. Um, this is actually by far the most important thing. But it's also going to have incredible performance. So we expect to have as, uh, 
three and a half seconds, zero to 60. Um, yeah, it's pretty, it's good. <laughs> um, and uh, very low center of gravity, so great, great uh, handling. Uh, it's, it's testing out at a 0.23 drag coefficient, which is extremely good for an SUV. Um, and in terms of range, 300 miles. Yeah. So we expect to have an EPA range of, uh, an actual true usable range of 300 miles. So, yeah. Hell yeah! yeah. From, an, from an interior standpoint, it has a, a panoramic uh, glass roof. And, and by the way, after, after I'm done here, you guys will be able to come up and like check out the car. So, uh, it's like, um, so it's gonna have a panoramic gra glass roof. It like really feels like, just like the Model 3, if you're in the car, it just feels like you're, you can see the sky. Uh, seat, seat seven, 66 cubic feet, um, obviously autopilot and you know, all that. Uh, and uh, uh, as I've said publicly, we expect to be feature complete with, uh, with self-driving sometime later this year. Um, and then uh, as, as we prove out the safety with uh, uh, billions of miles and kilometers, uh, uh, we will, uh, from our standpoint, feel it's like safe enough to not pay attention and then get the regulatory approval sometime thereafter. Um, but the, the cool thing is feature complete. Like it, it'll be able to do basically anything um, uh, by the end of this year. Um, just with soft, just with software upgrades, which is pretty cool. So, um, the, the 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 basically long range one we expect to be about forty seven thousand dollars, and then sometime in twenty twenty one we'll have the the sort of standard version, which will be have a thirty nine thousand dollar price point. So yeah. Uh, no, the seven seats are optional. Yeah. Um, You mean the, the lift gate? Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I mean, you never know. We might do better than this, uh, but uh, so it should be at least this good. So, uh, so I think it's going to be very, like really compelling. I'm, I'm, I'm confident that it, it'll, it'll be the, 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 the of, of any mid-size SUV, it'll be the one you want. Um, and uh, yeah, I think it'll probably sell. I think we'll probably do more. Model wise than S X M three combined, most likely. Yeah. So, <laughs> so there you have the sexy presentation. So, all right. Uh, so, uh, th thank you all for coming. Uh, um, th those of you who are here and those of you who are watching, thank you very much for your support over the years. It's been, uh, you know, a hell of a ride. Um, and uh, <laughs> I, I love you too. I love you too. Um, we are bringing sexy back quite literally. <laughs> All right, thank you.